All right, let's talk about the sympathetic nervous system and give an overview of the sympathetic nervous system. So our objectives, one, apply that two neuron autonomic nervous system model to sympathetics, and two, identify the origin of preganglionic and postganglionic sympathetic pathways. All right, so sympathetic nervous system. The two neuron ANS model is the following. We have a CNS origin, we have an autonomic ganglia destination. So the preganglionic neuron arises in the central nervous system, sends its axon to this peripheral autonomic ganglion. Then the cell body of the postganglionic neuron will then go out and hit some target organ. There we have it, the nut model. Now let's take that model applied to sympathetics. So the CNS origin for sympathetics is between the T1 and L2 spinal cord levels in that lateral horn. And the autonomic ganglion is twofold, the sympathetic chain and preaortic ganglia. And so what we have then is that two neuron model. Now, the thing about that autonomic ganglia is there's a sympathetic chain and preaortic ganglia. So let's do this little um, two neuron model, except spread it out and now show both the sympathetic chain and preaortic ganglion. So the sympathetic chain target organs include the following, head and neck structures, heart and lungs, blood vessels, and sweat glands. And primarily it's blood vessels in the limbs and head, and then uh, sweat glands all over the body. Then the preaortic ganglia target organs include the GI tract, so including the, the organs, or perfor the accessory organs, and the adrenal gland, as well as blood vessels in the abdominal cavity, and then also the renal system, and then finally pelvic and perineal structures as well. So there we've got all of that in a nutshell. So why don't we, let's do that all again, shall we? All right, so except this time we're gonna use this illustration to cross section through the spinal cord. And so there's the T1L2 spinal cord and there's the T1L2 spinal cord as well, and just an example of it. So let's now identify things on here. So first of all, there's the gray matter and the gray matter has a dorsal horn for sensory input, a ventral horn for motor output, and the lateral horn for where that T1 to L2 levels of sympathetics are going to arise. Then we have the white matter all along the periphery of the spinal cord. Then we also have the dorsal root with that dorsal root ganglion for sensory neurons going in to the dorsal horn, a ventral root for motor neurons coming out, the spinal nerve trunk where those roots come together, and now we have two-way streets, motor sensory, and then the dorsal ramus that's taking motor to the deep back muscles and sensory from the skin of the back between the shoulder blades, and then there's the ventral ramus that is going to all other trunk and limb muscles and skin all over the trunk and the limbs except for the skin between the shoulder blades. Now, that is the area that we're going to focus on right now, in that area. So I put an orange circle there because that's showing a sympathetic ganglion. Now, that structure indicated by the arrow is called the white ramus communicans because it's taking sympathetics from the ventral ramus into the sympathetic ganglion. There's the gray ramus communicans because it's taking information from the sympathetic ganglion out to the uh, ventral ramus. They're called rami for branches, communicans because they communicate between the two. And one's, yeah. So then here's the whole thing labeled. And so you can pause here if you want to make sure your illustration's labeled. But now we have all those things identified. Let's go forward. So we have the sympathetic chain. Now the sympathetic chain is, lo is indicated in this illustration there. Now the sympathetic chain really is showing a sympathetic ganglion. Well, that begs the question, what is a ganglion? Well, a ganglion is a collection of nerve cell bodies. Huh. Well, what cell bodies make up the sympathetic ganglia? Shing! Those cell bodies make up the sympathetic ganglion. It's the cell bodies of the postganglionic sympathetic neuron. All right, so why is it called a sympathetic chain? Well, the sympathetic chain is like a pearl necklace, where here you've got a pearl, and now you have pearls, plural. And if we then put a chain between the two, we now have a pearl necklace. The sympathetic chain is like a pearl necklace, where there is a sympathetic ganglion. There are sympathetic ganglia, in plural. And we connect them all together, we now have a sympathetic chain which is what we see in this picture. So there we have a sympathetic chain, and there we have the sympathetic ganglion, which is connected to those other ganglia that make a sympathetic chain. Okay, now, there's we have that preganglionic neuron, and there we have that preganglionic neuron as well, in the lateral horn gray matter. And see the axon goes out to synapse with the second, 
that postganglionic neuron? Well, let's now follow the axon from the preganglionic neuron out the ventral root to the ventral ramus, and notice how it comes in the white ramus communicons. Well, now it's going to synapse with the second, uh, the postganglionic neuron. And so there we've got now that postganglionic neuron that's going to exit out the gray ramus communicons back in the ventral ramus and go to blood vessels and sweat glands on that segmental level. Awesome. But it also could actually ascend and synapse in a more superadjacent or more superior located sympathetic ganglion and then have the postganglionic neuron go out. And you can go to the head and neck, so sweat glands and blood vessels in the head and neck or your pupil, heart and lungs, uh, sweat glands and other dermatomal areas, and blood vessels for vasoconstriction. Or you could have descending fibers that will go down and associate with blood vessels and sweat glands in a more inferior segmental level. Okay. So there we have it. There we've got the sympathetic chain. So now let's go from the sympathetic chain in those target organs down to the preaortic ganglia and those target organs. Here we have the preaortic ganglia. And there we have, in this illustration, the preaortic ganglia. And there we have a preganglionic neuron. It sends an axon out into the ventral root, ventral ramus, white ramus communicons into the sympathetic chain, but it does not synapse. It just continues on down through this called a splanchnic nerve. Whenever you see this word splanchnic, it means an organ, which synapses then in this preaortic ganglion, and then from there sends a neuron out to a target organ, like your GI tract, or your adrenal gland, or your blood vessels in your gut tube, or the renal system, or pelvic organs and perineal organs. So, there we have now the preaortic ganglia uh, overview. But let's do this all again, shall we? Because it's so much fun. Okay, so now we have another illustration that shows the whole CNS nervous system. And so, if we're going to then focus on the T1 to L2 spinal cord, there's the T1 to L2 spinal cord, and there we have the T1 to L2 spinal cord. So, now let's just take a moment and show what they are, the parts of it. There's the brain stem, and then there's the cervical cord with the C1 down to the C8 segmental level, and there's the thoracic spinal cord with the T1 down to the T12 segmental levels, and then there's the lumbar cord with the L1 down to the L5 levels, and the sacral cord with the S1 to the S5 levels, and the coccygeals down below, and who cares? Okay, so there we've got thoracic cord and lumbar cord, T1 to L2, so let's shorten that up a little bit to there, and then let's just, to make it easier to see, let's just separate those apart, shall we? And now we've got the T1 to L2 spinal cord level, which is where all preganglionic sympathetic neurons arise. The take-home point, all sympathetic pathways originate between the T1 and L2 spinal cord levels. Or, another way of saying it is, all preganglionic sympathetic neurons, shing, originate in the lateral horns of the T1, lateral horns of the T1 to L2 spinal cord levels. All right, now, orientation on this illustration to get to the next part. Well, there we've got the dorsal root, and there we've got a ventral root, and there we've got a ventral ramus, which also is located there. But then you think, hey, where's the dorsal ramus? Well, the dorsal ramus would be there if we drew it on, but to make this picture a little bit more simplified, I just took the dorsal ramus out so you don't see it. Okay, cool. Now, there's the T1 to L2 spinal cord level. Now, let's go over to the postganglionic neuron, starting with the sympathetic chain. So, there we've got the sympathetic chain in the illustration. And there we have a ganglion. We're going to move all the way over to land inside that sympathetic chain. There's the cell body of a postganglionic neuron. Sympathetic ganglion. What is a ganglion? Oh, yeah, it's a collection of cell bodies in the PNS. And what cell bodies in the sympathetic ganglion? Those are the cell bodies in the sympathetic ganglion, postganglionic sympathetic neurons. All right, now, the postganglionic neuron. All right, so there's a sympathetic ganglion there, and there's another sympathetic ganglion, and there's a whole bunch of sympathetic ganglion. So we call those sympathetic ganglia. Now, what happens if you put a chain all the way down through it? You now have what's called the sympathetic chain all the way down. And now what we're going to do is review. Sympathetic ganglion, sympathetic ganglion. Sympathetic ganglia, 
and then sympathetic chain that extends all the way up, down, up and down this, uh, uh, the chain goes all the way from cervical down to sacral regions of um, the cord. All right, now let's go to the pre-aortic ganglia. And to do that, we'll take a look at the T1, L2 spinal cord, and then there's the T1 to L2 spinal cord. Cool. And now we take a look at the postganglionic neuron, which is on this pre-aortic ganglia and plexus. Why is it called that? Well, it's called pre-aortic because pre-aortic is in front of the aorta. That's what all those yellow things are. So there we've got all of those are pre-aortic ganglia. Now they have names. They're also called pre-vertebral because this is in front of the vertebrae. And the reason why they call sometimes the pre-aortic the pre-vertebral ganglia because the sympathetic chain is sometimes called the para-vertebral ganglia. Remember what that prefix para means? To the side. Because the sympathetic chain is beside the vertebrae, pre-aortic ganglia is in front of the vertebrae. So those are synonymous terms you might hear. All right, so the pre-aortic ganglia and plexus has, has now has specific names, named usually around their artery. The celiac ganglion is around the celiac artery. The superior mesenteric ganglion is around the superior mesenteric artery. The aortical renal ganglion is where the aorta and renal arteries branch. And then you've got inferior mesenteric ganglion by the inferior mesenteric artery. And then down below, the superior hypogastric plexus, hypogastric nerve, inferior hypogastric plexus. So there's that pre-aortic ganglion plexus. We'll do those in more detail with the abdominal region. Okay, now there's the stomach and target organ. So let's now trace out a pathway. So there we've got a pre-ganglionic sympathetic neuron in the lateral horn of the T5 spinal cord level. It goes out all the way through from the sympathetic chain into the pre-aortic ganglion. Synapses, now well, that's the splanchnic nerve, synapses in the pre-vertebral ganglion, and then some specifically the celiac ganglion, and then sends its axon out to the stomach, and that's the target organ where it innervates. So sympathetic nervous system, in a nutshell, we've got a pre-ganglionic sympathetic neuron that synapses with a post-ganglionic sympathetic neuron, and the pre-ganglionic sympathetic neuron arises in the T1 to L2 spinal cord levels as illustrated in that picture. And then the sympathetic chain and pre-aortic ganglion is where the postganglionic neuron arises. And so the sympathetic chain is located there. And then the pre-aortic ganglion is located in this picture there. And then these all hit the target organ, which is located there. Head, neck, heart, lungs, blood vessels, sweat glands, GI tract, adrenal gland, renal system, pelvic organs. And there we have the sympathetic nervous system in a nutshell.